Welcome! At Tally, we strive to simplify all aspects of user experience. This includes not only the product, but also other services like installation, licensing, support, and so on. With this as the focus, we have enhanced the installer to give better experience and more capabilities. The updates make it more of a setup manager than just an installer. The setup manager provides a simple and intuitive installation experience so that you can quickly get started with the application. It is a one-stop solution for adding, managing and removing all Tally applications in a system. We have enhanced the intelligence of the setup in such a way that it gathers all required system and user information upfront and sets default actions on its own without requiring a user intervention. It handles all known user or technical situations that could potentially exist and informs you about errors or exceptions that may be encountered. Setup Manager also provides flexibility to alter installation configurations at any point of time while being informed about the related impact of the changes. Let us look at the capabilities of the Setup Manager while installing Tally Prime in a system where no Tally installation is present. Double click the setup.exe file. The install application screen appears. If you want to configure and change default settings such as application path, desktop shortcut, start menu entry and so on, click the configure option. Click install button to install the application. Once it is done, an installation successful message is displayed. You can click Start Tally Prime to start the application or press Escape to quit the Setup Manager. We can now look at the Setup Manager in action in a system where Tally applications such as Tally ERP9 is installed. Double click the setup.exe file. You will be taken directly to Update Flow. Here, you have the choice to either update the existing Tally ERP9 or install Tally Prime separately. By default, you will be asked to update. In case you have multiple instances of Tally ERP9 installed, select the Tally ERP9 installation in the list and press Enter. In the Update Tally ERP9 screen, click Update. An update successful message is displayed. Click Start Tally Prime to start the application or press Escape to quit the Setup Manager. In case you want to retain Tally ERP9 and install Tally Prime in a separate folder, click More Actions. In the list of actions, select Install New. The Install Application screen will be shown. Press I or click Install to start the installation. All buttons and options in Setup Manager are divided into three types. Additional Details, User Input, and yes or no types. You can use enter and escape button for interaction. In case of objective fields, press enter to switch between yes or no. In case of additional details, 
press enter to drill down and view details and escape to return. In case of user input, press enter to open the input fields and press enter again after specifying the details to accept and return to the previous screen. This behavior can be found across the product in TallyPrime. Whether you want to install a new instance, update old, repair an existing installation, the TallyPrime Setup Manager does everything. Thank you. For more information, go to help.tallysolutions.com. Welcome! In this video, we will look at the steps to configure data path in Tally Prime Multi-User. A definite path ensures that all the companies you create are stored in that location and companies are loaded from this data location every time you open the product. To configure the data path, select Data in the top menu and then Data Path. You will see the options to configure data path and backup path. If you're a new user with no tally installation in the system, then by default the data path is set to C drive, users, public, tally prime, data. If you're updating from tally ERP9 to tally prime, the path configured in tally ERP9 is carried forward you can retain the path shown in the field or configure a new path. Press Enter. In the Company Data Path screen, set the path using the Specify Path or select from Drive. You can even select Location Connected by Network or Tally Data Server Path. Let us check the impact of the new path. Press Alt K to open the company menu and go to Select. You will notice that the default path shown is the one you just configured. Also, select Create Company from the list. Here again, the configured path is shown as the company data path. Similar to company data path, you can set the company backup path under data. While performing backup, the destination path will be auto-populated based on the company backup path configuration. Similarly, while selecting company for backup by default, company data path will be selected in the table. Setting company data path avoids the need to select the location every time a company is created and while selecting a company to load. Thank you. For more information, go to help.tallysolutions.com. Welcome. In this video, we will look at the process to migrate Tally ERP9 data to Tally Prime. The data from Tally ERP9 has to be migrated to make it compatible with Tally Prime. You can migrate Tally ERP9 data to Tally Prime in two ways. The first method is by loading the company. To open a company data, go to the company menu and select. Use the specify path or select from drive option to navigate to the folder containing Tally ERP9 data. 
Teleprime will read the data type of the companies located in the selected folder and help you identify the companies that need to be migrated by showing the status as migration required against the company name. Select any data with status as migration required and press enter. The migration screen is shown. A backup is created for the data before migration. If you do not want to take backup or change the location of backup, use the configure option. Press R in the Migrate Company screen. The company data is migrated to TallyPrime. For the second method, go to Help in top menu, select Troubleshooting and then Migrate. Here again, the status migration required is shown for data created in Tally ERP 9. Select Company and press Enter. Click Migrate or press R to migrate. The data from versions earlier than Tally ERP 9 cannot be directly migrated to Tally Prime. You will have to convert to Tally ERP 9 first and then migrate to Tally Prime. Tally Prime helps to identify the data that needs migration, takes backup before migration, and migrate Stanley ERP9 data in a swift manner. Thank you. For more information, visit help.tallysolutions.com. Welcome to Tally Learning Hub. In this session, you will learn how to create ledgers in Tally Prime. Just like you create different accounts to record your business transactions, we will create the same ledger accounts in Tally Prime. The common ledgers that every business needs are customers, suppliers, purchases, sales, cash, and bank accounts. We are now on the gateway of Tally, which is the main menu of Tally Prime. Let's start with a tip for you. For every option that you see in the menu, one letter in each is in bold. For example, in balance sheet, B is in bold and in vouchers, V is in bold. These letters are the shortcuts for you to quickly go to each option. So you press B for balance sheet, V for vouchers and so on. Similarly, on every screen in Tally, you will find a top menu and side menu. Using top menu, you can perform actions or settings related data, company, etc. and quickly navigate from anywhere to everywhere from any screen. Likewise, the options in the side menu help you perform various actions in the context of the screen you are. Here, before every option, the keyboard shortcut is given. One underline means that you need to press ALT along with the key given and two underlines means that you have to press CONTROL along with the key given. Now, let's start creating ledgers in Tally Prime. Creating ledgers in Tally Prime is so flexible that you can create it from different places that suit your flow. First, let's start creating a ledger while recording a voucher entry. Press V for vouchers. Press F8 for sales. Here, I find that party ledger is not available on my list. To create, just press Alt plus C from the field or select Create from the list. This will take you to the ledger creation screen to help you easily create them during the transaction itself. Type the customer's name, press Enter, select a group for the ledger from the list. The group helps to identify the type of ledger we are creating. Since this is a customer's ledger, let's select the group as debtors. To select the group quickly, type the first few letters of the group and the list filters down. Type the customer's address and then press Y to accept the ledger. The ledgers now appear in the transaction. This is so flexible that you can start recording the invoice in a few minutes 
right after installing Tally Prime even without setting up your chart of accounts. Press Escape to come back to Gateway of Tally. Next, let's learn another way to create ledgers. From Gateway of Tally, press C for Create, type L and select Ledgers. Now let's create a supplier's ledger. Type the supplier's name, press Enter, select a group for the ledger from the list. Since this is a supplier's ledger, let's select the group as creditors. Type the supplier's address. Press Y to accept the ledger. Let's now create a purchase ledger. Type the name of the ledger as purchases. Select the group as purchase accounts. Now, here is another tip for you. At any screen in Tally, if you want to save what you have entered, you can press Ctrl plus A. And if you want to go back to a previous screen, press Escape. Press Ctrl plus A to accept the ledger. Similarly, let's create a sales ledger. Type the name of the ledger as sales, select the group as sales accounts, press Ctrl plus A to accept the ledger. Let's now create a bank ledger. Type the name of the bank account. Select the bank account group. Next, there are certain additional details you need to enter, such as your account number, IFSC code and bank name. These are only required if you want to use Tally Prime's banking features such as check printing, auto bank reconciliation and e-payments. Enter the account number, the IFSC code, select the bank name. Let's accept the bank ledger by pressing Ctrl plus A. Let's now go back to the previous screen by pressing Escape. Again, press Escape to go back to Gateway of Tally. In case you want to create multiple ledgers in one go, let's say you want to create rent, conveyance and office expenses under the expenses group. You don't have to create each ledger one by one. Press H for chart of accounts. Select the masters that you want to view. I'm selecting ledger. Press Alt plus H for multi masters and select multi create. Type and select the group as indirect expenses. Type the name of the ledgers one by one. Press enter, accept the screen. All these ledgers are created at one shot. Using the chart of accounts, you can view all the ledgers you have created along with the groups to which these ledgers belong. You can use the options in the side menu to change the view and discover more information. Press F5 to view ledger-wise and click Exceptions to know used, unused ledgers and so on. Press Escape and go back to Gateway of Tally. At any time, if you want to edit the ledgers you have created, you can select Alter. Select Ledger from the list and select the ledger account you want to edit. Press Escape to go back to the previous screen. Now, you will see that in addition to the ledgers you have created, Cash and Profit and Loss account ledgers are also displayed. These two ledgers are available by default when you create a company in Tally Prime. Press Escape and go back to Gateway of Tally. Next, let's learn another way to create ledgers using GoTo. Let's say you are viewing Balance Sheet and found that you missed creating a fixed asset ledger account which had some carried forward balance from the last year. To quickly create a ledger from here, press Alt plus G for GoTo, select Create Master and select Ledger. Type the name Select the group as fixed asset, mention the last year carried balance in opening balance and press Y to accept. Press escape and come back to balance sheet. Now you can see the ledger you have created. This way you can create masters from any screen without leaving the report or abandoning the task that you were on. That is it. These are the different places from which you can create ledgers in Tally Prime. You can choose any of the ways that suit best to your flow. 
All right, here is a quick summary of things we learned. On the fly, creation of ledger accounts from vouchers. Ledger creation and alteration from master's menu. Viewing chart of accounts with change view and exceptions reports. Creating multiple ledgers at one shot. Creating masters from any screen using GoTo. Welcome to Tally Learning Hub. In this session, you'll learn how to record purchases and sales in Tally Prime. Let's first record a purchase. Press V for vouchers. Here is a quick tip for you. You can simply toggle between different voucher types using the keys available in the side menu. If you wish to access other voucher types not listed in the menu, press F10 for other vouchers, type name, and select the voucher type you want to access. This way, it is easier to navigate to different voucher types without the need to remember the shortcut keys. Press Escape to go back. Press F9 for purchase. Here, you can change the format of invoice depending upon the nature and usage. To do this, press Ctrl plus H for change mode. Accounting invoice is suitable for recording service bills. As voucher, to record the transactions in debit credit mode. I'm selecting item invoice mode to record inventories purchased. Press F2 and type the date. Type the invoice number and date of the bill your supplier has given you. Select the supplier's ledger. Next, mention the receipt details such as GRN number, dispatch details, etc. Press Ctrl plus A. The supplier's details are automatically captured from the ledger. Press Ctrl plus A to accept the screen. Select the purchase ledger. Press spacebar and you get the list of stock items that you have created. Select the item you have purchased. Enter the quantity and the rate. Once all the stock items purchased have been selected, press enter and come to the field after the total line. You can see that the list immediately changes to show the list of tax ledgers and other ledgers such as packaging charges, carriage, etc. that you may want to select. I am selecting the transportation charges. Mention the amount. Press Enter. Type a narration for the voucher if required. A narration is nothing but a short explanation of the transaction for your future reference. Press Enter. Press Y to accept the transaction. Let's now record a sale. Press F8 for sales. Select the customer's ledger. You can enter the dispatch and order details if required. Press Ctrl plus A to accept the screen. The customer's details are automatically captured from the ledger. Press Ctrl plus A to accept the screen. A tip for faster entry. In case the dispatch details or editing the party details are occasional in nature, you can disable these so that your normal flow of recording transaction is not disturbed. To disable, press F12 for configure and set provide buyer details and provide receipt, order and import details to no. Whenever such occasional details are required to be mentioned, press Ctrl plus I for more details and specify the details as required. Press Escape and select the Sales Ledger. Press Spacebar to get the list of items and select the item you are selling. Enter the quantity and the rate. Press Enter to move to the field after the total line. You can select the tax ledgers such as GST, VAT, etc. as applicable. Also, the other additional ledgers such as transportation, discount, etc. can be selected. Enter the narration if required. Press Y to accept the transaction. If you want to print the invoice for this voucher, press Page Up. The previous voucher is shown. Press Alt plus P to print. Select Current. If you want to see the preview of the invoice before printing, press I for Preview. Press F4 to Zoom. Press Escape to exit the Zoom mode. Again, press Escape to come out of Preview mode. Press P to print the invoice. Escape to go back. 
here is a tip. You can create new voucher, view and print other reports right in the middle of voucher entry using go to and print menu. All these without losing the details that you have entered. That's it. Recording purchases and sales in Tally Prime is that simple and quick. Just like purchase and sales. There are other voucher types available in Tally Prime helping you account different nature of business transactions. To toggle between different voucher types, use function keys shown in the side menu. Press Alt and Control key to see additional voucher types. To access these, use Alt or Control plus the key given next to the voucher type. Or you can simply press F10 for other vouchers. Type and select the voucher type that you want to use. In another way, you can click the arrow next to vouchers to see more vouchers related to it. Here is a quick recap. Recording a purchase and sales transaction. Preview and print the invoice. Keys to access various other vouchers types in Tally Prime. Welcome. In this video, you will see how to save paper when printing invoices. If you think your invoices have unutilized space, adding avoidable paper and printing expenses, Tally Prime provides you with two features that will enable cost-effective printing. You can optimize the use of paper while printing and reduce the height of the header from the second page. These features work when using simple or comprehensive invoice print formats for plain paper. This is applicable to different invoices. Try reducing the sales invoice. Open your sales invoice. Press Alt G. Select Create Voucher. Press F8. Press Page Up button to select a saved voucher. Press Alt P for the current page or press Ctrl plus P to directly open the landing page. Select Configure. Enable the configuration. Optimize printing to save paper. Preview. Here is a sample invoice with two pages. You can observe the space at the bottom of the invoice utilized for printing item details. Once the optimized printing to save paper is enabled, use the configuration. Choose details to show second page onwards. Disable the details not needed from second page. It will enable you to stop printing information from the left and right parts of the invoice header. Here's a sample second page of the invoice. Now you know how to save printing expenses for invoices. For more information, visit help.tallysolutions.com. Welcome to Tally Learning Hub. In this session, you will learn how to record payments and receipts in Tally Prime. This is similar to how we recorded purchases and sales in our previous session. The only difference is that the fields required to be filled will be related to payments and receipts. Let's start. Press V for vouchers. Press F5 for payment. Press F2 to set the date. I want to set the date to 5th April. You will notice that automatically Tally changes the date to 5th April assuming that since our last transaction was on 4th April, we will want to change the date to the next date. Let us record a payment made for the rent. Since this is a payment, Tally first asks for the ledger from which the payment is made. This can be either the cash or the bank ledger. Press spacebar and you will see the list of cash or bank ledgers you've created. 
Select the ledger. I am selecting the bank ledger. Now, let's select the ledger to which the payment is made. Press spacebar to see the list of ledgers and select the ledger. I will select the rent ledger. Enter the amount. Press enter until you get this bank allocation screen. Here, you can enter the method by which you are making the payment. Check, transfer or others. Depending on the method of payment, you can enter the check number or UTR number if required. This will be useful if you use our banking features like check printing, check management and bank reconciliation. Enter the narration if required. While recording a payment or receipt transactions, you get various options in the side menu. You can use Autofill to record the statutory payments such as GST, TDS remittance, etc. Similarly, in case the payment received is a post-dated check, you can mark the voucher as post-dated by pressing Ctrl L. Accept the voucher. Let us now record a receipt voucher. Press F6 for receipt. Since this is a receipt, Tally first asks for the ledger in which money is received. This can be either the cash or bank ledger. I am selecting the bank ledger. Now, select the ledger from which the money is being received. It can be your customer's ledger or income ledger. For me, it's interest. So, I will select the interest ledger. Enter the amount. Select the method by which the money is received and the instrument details. Enter the narration if required. Accept the voucher. Similarly, you can record all your business transactions in Tally Prime. There's no need to get confused by which ledger to debit or credit. Just select the type of transaction and enter the details required. Your debits and credits are taken care of while your accounts and reports are updated instantly. Anytime you want to change to double entry mode, press Ctrl plus H for change mode and select double entry. Using this, you can easily toggle between single entry to double entry and vice versa. If you want to see the list of transactions you've recorded in a day, press Alt plus G for go to and type daily and select daily entries. In another way, from to gateway of tally, press D for display more reports. Press D for day book. A quick recap of things we learned in this session. Recording Payment and Receipt Voucher Change Mode from Single Entry to Double Entry Mode and vice versa Viewing Day-to-Day -day Transactions from Daybook
welcome. In this video, we will look at the new navigation framework called GoTo that allows you to open any report from anywhere in the product. This framework facilitates easy discovery of reports, handling of interruptions, and enables to hold in-progress transaction to create a new one. Consider a situation where you are entering a purchase transaction and your manager asks for a stock summary report. From the voucher screen, press Alt-G, search for stock summary and press Enter to view the report. Print the report for him. Press Escape to return to the purchase transaction which will be in the same state as you left. Continue recording and save. Or you are entering a pause invoice and your customer walks away to pick up more items. And the next customer is eagerly waiting to bill. Press Alt G. The current transaction will be put on hold. Select Create Voucher in the go to list. Build the next customer and save. You will go back to the previous voucher that was put on hold with all details intact. Continue and save. Or you want to know the credit value of a vendor while recording a payment transaction. Press Alt G and open Outstanding Report. In a similar way, you can handle any interruption. For more information, visit help.tallysolutions.com. Welcome! In this video, we will look at the process of GSTR2 reconciliation using Tally Prime Release A. Tally Prime provides a simple mechanism to reconcile your GSTR2 transactions with the transactions uploaded on GSTN portal. It identifies mismatches and enables corrections in your books. After cross-checking with the data imported from GSTR2A, you can mark the status as accepted, rejected, pending, modified, and so on. In order to start the reconciliation, you have to first download GSTR2A in JSON format to a local folder from GSTN portal. The file will be in zip format. Do not unzip it. Open Tally Prime and select the company to do GSTR2 reconciliation. Open GSTR2 report from Display More Reports, GST Reports, GSTR2. Or from Go To, type GSTR2 and press Enter. In GSTR2 report, change the period of the report to the period for which GSTR2A file has been downloaded from the portal for reconciliation. To reconcile books data with that downloaded from the portal, click Import in top menu or press Alt plus O and select Load JSON. Select Downloaded JSON file by using the option Specify Path or Select From Drive.
Select the file and press Enter to load the JSON. A message is displayed with the details of number of invoices that were loaded from the JSON file. You can press Enter or click on Yes to update the reconciliation status. Once the loading is completed, you will see the report like this. For each section of GSDR2, it is divided into, as per portal, indicated in blue color, as per books, in black color. These placements have been done strategically to help you identify whether the values as per books and values as per portal match or not. This screen will also give you the count of vouchers, taxable amount, tax amount and the reconciliation status. Using this information, you will be able to identify mismatch if any. The mismatches could be due to partial match where some information of the invoices from books matches with that uploaded by a supplier on GST portal, PESA difference, information is available in portal but not available in the books, information is available in the books but not available in the portal. In order to check which transactions are causing the mismatch, you can press enter on specific section and drill down. We will drill down into B2B invoices. Here too, you will find values as per portal and values as per books are displayed separately. Any difference in values can be identified easily. You can further drill down to see invoice-wise information for each supplier. You can see that one invoice is displayed under available only in books. You can compare the values in each column of this invoice with the corresponding invoice from the portal and identify the value that is causing the mismatch. You will observe that the supplier GSTN captured in books is different and therefore it could not be clubbed together. To make the necessary correction in the invoice in your books, go to available only in books section. Select the transaction and press enter to drill down into the invoice. Go to party name and hit enter to open the supplement received details. Press Ctrl A. This will open party details screen. Replace the GSTIN to match GSTIN shown in the invoice from the portal and save the transaction. See, now the invoices are clubbed and shown together. Next up, let us see what is causing the difference in transaction of another party. Here we have two invoices. To make it simple to identify the transaction with the mismatch, it is shown in bold. Details of second invoice are in bold. To see what the difference is, place the cursor on the second invoice and press Shift Enter. The difference is due to invoice value mismatch caused by difference in total taxable value and tax value report in the portal versus what is there in the books. You can verify and identify for which information is incorrect and causing the mismatch. You may check the physical invoice to verify if the details entered in tally are right. In case the information is correct, 
then you may want to check with your supplier and get clarification regarding these invoices. However, if the information entered in tally is incorrect, you may want to correct it. Move your cursor to the information shown in black and press Ctrl Enter. This will open the invoice in alteration mode. You can now modify the invoice and save it. This will ensure that your books match with that in the portal. You can now select both the invoices of the party and press Alt S to set the status as accepted. This allows you to know that these vouchers are verified and accepted by you. Let us now see a few other mismatches. Here, this transaction is only available in portal. The corresponding book entry is not available. And here, this is only available in books, not in the portal. This is one of the transactions with a perfect match. This again is a transaction with a perfect match. Here, you can see that the invoice number is different. And here, the date is different. You can similarly go through the transactions to find the differences and resolve them. Thank you. For more information, visit help.tallysolutions.com. Welcome to Tally Learning Hub. In this session, you will learn how to set your GST details in Tally Prime. In Tally Prime, as soon as the company is created by you, the GST feature gets enabled by default and allows you to set the GST details in the features page. In case you miss to set the details, there are multiple ways in which you can do it. To begin with, press Alt plus G for Go To. Select Alter Master. Type GST and select GST details from the list. Select the state in which your business is located. Select the registration type. I am selecting Regular. Next, mention the date from when the GST applies to your business. Type your GSTIN. Select Return, Periodicity of Return. Press Enter and move to Set or Alter GST Details. Press Y on Set or Alter GST Details and press Enter. Here you can set the GST rate applicable to most stock items in your business. Example, Max Electronics majorly deals in computer parts. They can set the GST rate for computer parts here and it gets applied to all the items in the company. Later, in case they deal in stock groups or items for which a different GST rate is applicable, we will see how easy it is to set the GST rates only for those stock groups or items. Here is a tip for you. To include additional details, press F12 for configure and enable the options as required. Let's enable allow HSN or SAC details and show all GST tax types. Press enter to accept the settings. Enter the HSN description and the HSN or SAC code. Select the taxability as taxable. Type the GST rate, press enter. Press Ctrl plus A to accept the screen. Let's see another way to set the GST details. Press Escape and come back to Gateway of Tally. Press A for Alter from Gateway of Tally. Type GST and select GST details. Press Escape to come back to Gateway of Tally. In another way, press F11 and enter on Enable Goods and Services Tax. 
press escape and come back to gateway of tally. Next, let's see how to set the GST rate for stock groups or items for which a different GST rate is applicable. Press Alt plus G for go to. Type rate setup. Select GST rate setup from the list. Your major stock groups with their GST rate will be shown here. Currently, both are showing 18% which will set in GST details screen. Press Alt plus F5 for a detailed view. Now, you can see the subgroups under each major stock group and the stock items under these subgroups. For Max Electronics, the group Digital Cameras is taxed at 28% and not at 18%. So we will select the group Digital Cameras by pressing Spacebar. Press Alt plus S for Set Rate. Mention the HSN and Rate details. Now, you can see that for the stock group Digital Cameras and all the items under Digital Cameras, the GST rate has got updated to 28%. Similarly, you can even set a GST rate for a stock item. Just select the stock item using Spacebar and press Alt plus S. Remember that this is the order in which Tally will apply the GST rate for an item. First, in case you have set the GST rate in the item that rate is applied. If not, Tally will check whether the GST rate is set in the stock group. If so, that rate is applied. If not, Tally will check the GST rate set in F11 features and use that rate. In case you missed to set the GSTIN of your suppliers, customers and other parties at the time of ledger creation, you can easily set it from a single screen. Press Alt plus G for Go To. Type GSTIN. Select Update Party GSTIN. Select All Items in Name of Groups and Ledger. Select the Registration Type, Party Type and enter the GSTIN. Accept the screen. Press Escape. The next step is to set the Unit Quantity Code or UCQ for your stock items. These are codes for units of measure which you need for filing your GST returns. Again, press Alt plus G for Go To and type UQC. Select Map UOM UQC. The units of measure that you have created in your company will be shown here. Press F5 for Map to UQC. The list of codes will be shown here. All you need to do is to select the code for your unit of measure. Here, since Max Electronics unit of measure is numbers, I will select numbers. The final step for you to be GST ready is to create the GST ledgers. To quickly create ledgers from the same screen, press Alt plus G for Go To and select Create Master. Select Ledger from the list. Type the name as CGST, select the group as Duties and Taxes, select GST as the type of duty, tax type as Central Tax. Press Ctrl plus A to accept the screen. Similarly, type the name as SGST, select the tax type as State Tax, press Ctrl plus A to accept the screen and lastly, type the name as IGST, select the tax type as Integrated Tax. Press Ctrl plus A to accept. In case CES is applicable for your business, you can create a ledger for CES too. We are done with setting the GST details. Now, you can record the vouchers using the tax ledgers and view the returns from GST reports. Here is a quick recap of things we learned. Setting company and GST rate details. Setting GST rate at stock group and item using rate setup mapping UQC, updating party GSTIN and creating tax ledgers. Welcome! In this video, we will look at the process to use the existing license of Tally ERP9 in Tally Prime. You need to have a perpetual Tally ERP9 license with a valid TSS subscription in order to upgrade to Tally Prime. 
If DSS is expired, you will not be able to use Tally ERP9 license in Tally Prime. To use an existing license, you have to upgrade from Tally ERP9 to Tally Prime directly. Double click the Tally Prime Setup EXE. Here, you have the choice to either upgrade the existing Tally ERP9 or install Tally Prime separately. If you have single instance of Tally ERP9 running, you will be directly taken to Update Process. In case you have multiple instances of Tally ERP9 installed, select the Tally ERP9 installation in the list and press Enter. In the Update Tally ERP9 screen, click Update. An update successful message is displayed. Click Start Tally Prime to start the application. Tally Prime will start in license mode. If Tally ERP9 was in educational mode at the time of update, Tally Prime will start in the education mode. If you have an existing licensing with valid TSS, you can reactivate the license in just a couple of clicks and use Tally Prime in the licensed mode. We understand that you may want to continue to use Tally ERP9 even after upgrading to Tally Prime. Tally Prime supports this using the new version of the Tally Gateway Server version 11.0, which supports both Tally ERP9 client as well as Tally Prime client simultaneously. This coexistence is supported for Tally Prime and Tally ERP9. Let us just see how the license is upgraded and shared. Install Tally Prime separately in a different folder in the same system as Tally ERP9. Tally Prime will start in Education mode. Click Reactivate License and provide your TallyNet ID and password to reactivate. You will get the License Reactivation message. Once the license is reactivated in Tally Prime, Tally ERP9 goes into Education mode. You can now share the Tally Prime license with Tally ERP9. Get the gateway server details with port number from Tally Prime. Start Tally ERP9. Press Ctrl plus Alt plus L or click License and Services panel in the bottom pane. Click F12 Configure Existing License button. The Tally Prime Gateway Server Machine and Port Details are listed. Select the same. Select Yes in message displayed to use the same license. Tally ERP9 will restart in licensed mode. If you are a multi-user and you want to configure your Tally ERP9 from a different machine, you can give the machine name and port of server machine where Tally Prime Gateway Server is running. We have simplified the licensing process of Tally Prime by enabling you to use the existing license in a few simple steps. Thank you. For more information, visit help.tallysolutions.com.
tallyprime.com. In this video, we will see how to get started with Tally Prime and create your first invoice. The simplistic design and flexibility of Tally Prime allows you to print an invoice in a matter of minutes after installation. You can download the Tally Prime installer from Tally Solutions website. Double click the setup.exe to start the installation. In the installation wizard, click install. The wizard installs the application in default path. It is a single click process. Start Tally Prime. Once Tally Prime is installed, you have to activate the license. Tally Prime will be in educational mode until the license is activated. This is shown in the title bar. Click Activate New License. Enter the serial number, activation key and your email ID. Provide a valid email ID here that you use frequently since this ID will be used for all communication and license management. It will also be assigned as Tallinet ID. After you accept the details, the unlock key is sent to the given email ID. Copy or enter the unlock key and accept. Tally Prime license is now activated with the given serial number. You will notice that Tally Prime has changed from educational mode to the license mode. The color of the title bar changes when the license is active. You can now start with your company creation. Select Create Company. You can also use the company menu on the top. Enter the name of the company and the contact details. Provide the financial year beginning and book's beginning date. You can alter the company master later at any point in time to add more details. Save to create the company. The company features screen is displayed. You can enable the required features now or later at any point in time. Press escape to exit. You are now ready to record an invoice and print. Let us create a sales invoice. Press V to go to vouchers. Press F8 to open a sales voucher. You can select cash ledger, which is provided by default. You can create another ledger on the fly using Alt C. Same with the items. Just press Alt C to create them on the fly. Enter the item details, including unit of measure. Accept to return to the voucher screen. Enter the quantity and rate. Select the sales ledger. You can create the sales ledger also using the shortcut key. That's all. Your invoice is ready. Save it. Open the saved invoice and print it. The invoice will show you all the details. Let us now check some reports. All your reports are readily available and are updated with every transaction. Here is the day book. This lists all the transactions in the day. And here is your trial balance. You can view the reports at any time from anywhere using Go to option. As you can see, you can start with recording transactions within no time in Tally Prime. You can enable all features related to accounting, inventory or statutory as you go along. 
If you are an existing Tally ERP9 user, you can upgrade your installation to Tally Prime or install Tally Prime in a different folder. Both new users and existing users will find it very easy to start using Tally Prime. Thank you. For more information, visit help.tallysolutions.com.